is joy. Where Jesus is reigning, there is liberty. This morning, because Jesus is reigning here, you are free from your sickness. You are free from the fear. You are free from your problem. You are free from your enemies. You are free from the accusation. You are free from the condemnation. You are free from whatever power that was holding you. Because Jesus is ready. And the reign of Jesus is the reign of freedom. The Bible says about him, he is such shalom. The Prince of Peace. Oh, he reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. Let him reign in your heart. Let him reign in that situation. Let him reign in that sickness. Let him reign in that fight. Let him reign in that contest. Verse 5 to 8. The Bible says that 
under 5.12. He did this because Daniel, who was, so sorry, whom the king called Belshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel and he will tell you what the reading means. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 8. For this very reason make every effort. Somebody say make every effort. Make every effort. You know, you hear Apostle Peter saying that we should not manage any effort. Every possible effort which is possible to you as a human being need to be made. Why? Or to what? For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith. What? Goodness. And to your goodness, what? Knowledge. So knowledge needs to be added into our faith. So my message this morning is titled, Knowledge and understanding key to excellence. Knowledge and understanding key to excellence. This year, the Lord told us, is a year of excellence. We need to excel in everything we are doing. We need to excel in all the areas of our lives. I mean, we need to be outstanding. We need to be different. We need to be noticed. We need to do special things. We need to do things that are going to be recorded. Even after our passing, our children after us, or the children of our children will say, this is what granddad did, did, and this is what grandma did. Because in this year of excellence, we need to do those kind of things. Amen. Amen. But for us to reach excellence, it is not just going to come like that. We need to work on it. We need to be aware of it. And then we need to be um, focused on it. And then we need to be working on it. This is the reason why this morning I want us to work on this knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Now, what is knowledge? For sure, those are words that we use on a daily basis. What is knowledge? Knowledge is just fact or information and skills acquired through experience or education, theoretical or practical. Okay, that's a long definition. But in short, and uh, I mean, Knowledge is just a pile of information that you have with you. It is a pile of uh, fact that you have accumulated all along your staying on this earth. For sure, there are many things that you have learned by being around. By being on this earth, by going where you go, by working where you work, you have learned a lot of things. You have accumulated a lot of information. If I ask you, you know, yesterday I was in Pretoria, I needed a GPS. Because I don't have any knowledge of Pretoria. I, mean, I have my knowledge of Pretoria could not help me to, to drive freely without a GPS. But when I'm in Rassenberg, I don't need a GPS. Because I have knowledge of Rassenberg. I know Rassenberg. I know many places in Rassenberg and I can go there without any GPS because I have, I have, I have downloaded in me, the knowledge of Rassenberg. Hallelujah. Amen. If you, I come to your house and I ask you for spoon, you can easily walk and go and take your spoon. Easily. Because you have knowledge of your house. You have information where 
things are good and where other things are good. But if you ask me in your house to find a spoon, I may struggle because I don't have knowledge of your house. Are you with me? There are those information are not downloaded in me. You know, it's happened to me that I want to cook something quickly at home or I want to do something quickly. I don't want to bother my wife. <coughs> Sorry, and I want to do it myself. I remember that day I wanted to, to do a bit of a omelette. And then suddenly I realized that I'm in the kitchen now. Now I need to find where, where are those poils that they use. You know, I open here, there's no, I open here. Because I don't have knowledge of the kitchen. Where, I, where they put onion, you know, I struggled a little bit. But if it was her, she wouldn't struggle. She would directly open her because she has knowledge of her kitchen. She has information that is downloaded. And those information, she got them by spending time there, cooking all the, every day. That is, she experienced that. But also, the knowledge can come by being taught. Somebody can teach you. If you enter in this kitchen, on the left, you'll find there is a drawer there. Though that, that is the place where I put this. And in the other, on the right side, if you open the drawer like this, so you can also learn. You've never been there. you never experienced that kitchen. But because somebody has given you information, you can also get into that place and have knowledge of the place. Are you with me? So knowledge is only a pile of information that you have accumulated in your life. And as I say, you being around in this earth for so many years, you have accumulated so many informations. You have accumulated knowledge. You know. You know how things go around. You know how the world is. You know how places are. You know how your job is. You know at school how is it. You know how to take a transport. You know how to take bus and all those things. And God, he is insisting, he is encouraging us to inquire knowledge. He is pushing us to have knowledge. He is pushing us to have information and skills about things. Now listen to this and listen carefully. Knowledge can be of many kind or let me rather say of two kind. There is knowledge of the things of God and there is knowledge of other things. So you can get information, you can get fact, you can get experience of things of God, but you can also get knowledge, you can also get fact of things of the world, other things. Hallelujah. And God wants you to have knowledge. He wants you to have knowledge. Because, brothers and sisters, the person who knows better than you will command you. He will manipulate you. Because he has more information than you. People who have more information, or those who are getting information before you, they will always be ahead of you. When you will be left, struggling left and right, they already have information. You know, a couple of years ago, one of my friends came to me and asked me, my friend, do you know something called Novatech? I said, what is that? He said, oh, you don't know. As for many years, we've been using this platform to increase our money. And when I get finally into this, I found out there are people who got that information long time ago. And they've got a lot of money before. Why? Because they've got information, knowledge before me. You see, brothers and sisters, knowledge will put you in a position to have better view than other people do not have knowledge. You will see things that other people cannot see. You will, I mean, do things sometimes that other people will be asking, why are you doing them? Because of knowledge. Now, but listen to this. God is not expecting you to have knowledge of everything. Because it's not possible. You can't have knowledge of everything. But God wants you to have all the knowledge about the things that you need. Are you making a difference? God doesn't want you to have the knowledge of everything. You must know how to sew. You must know how to clean. You must know how to repair electricity. You must know. God doesn't want that. 
Because he knows that it's not possible for you to accumulate all those knowledge. Your brain is only one brain. So you can't get all those things. But God wants you to have all the necessary knowledge in whatever thing that you need in your life. Unfortunately, this is the problem that we're having in the church. We want to have all the knowledge, but we do not, I mean, we want to know everything about everything, but we do not have all the knowledge about what we need. You, you are a Christian. Do you have all the knowledge about Christianity? You are screaming here, you want to become a pastor. You want to become a prophet. You want to become a singer. Do you have all the knowledge about singing? We are not asking you to have all the knowledge about singing, about preaching, about cleaning, but about what you are required to do. Do we have the necessary knowledge about it? Do we have the necessary knowledge? You want to become a doctor? If you want to become a doctor, you better you have all the knowledge about doctor. Because otherwise, when we come to your office and uh, I tell you our complaint, you will go and open the book. Why you say what's your problem and try to see that problem? What does it mean? We'll run away from you. Because we see that you're a doctor who is not, you, you, are, you are not mastering. You don't know everything about your profession. So God is not expecting you and me to know everything about everything. But he is expecting you to know everything about what you need. Hallelujah. Beloved, I realize that in my small experience in this world, I just saw something which is said. Usually, most of black people, they have very superficial knowledge about what they are doing. This is what I've, I've noticed. I may be wrong. But if you want to ask white people, they usually go deep in whatever thing they are doing. They'll try to learn. If you bring somebody here and say, okay, you cut, do for me garden, and it's black. And do for me garden and it's white. You'll see the white will always tell you, hey, be careful. This kind of help, you need this medication. This, the black just going to cut, 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 cut. It's a problem. And this is a problem, brothers and sisters. We can improve. Check yourself. Challenge yourself right now. In whatever area, in whatever uh, profession you are in, are you inquiring all the knowledge about it? Do you read books about it? Do you want to know more about what you are doing? Or the knowledge that they get to give you at school it is enough? Listen, the world is changing. Hallelujah. Amen. Change are always coming. If there is something that you cannot stop, it is change. In fact, if there is a constant in our life, two are constant. Change and time. Those are constant in anybody's life. Lacking it or not, there will be change in your life. You can go to the gym the way you want. Your, your hair will grow gray. You will become old. Your, your upper lips will go down. You can do whatever you want. That change, it will happen. Are you with me? So that's a constant of life. Hallelujah. Because change are coming, you need to learn about change. Because if you do not have knowledge about change, change will destroy you. You must know how to handle change. This morning I'm not speaking about change. I'm speaking about knowledge. So you need to inquire knowledge, brothers and sisters. Knowledge is important. And in Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 7, Jeremiah 24, verse 7, God promised to give us knowledge. He promised that I will give you knowledge, I will give you information. Because if you do not have information, there is something that you're going to learn that is going to be difficult for you to have. In Jeremiah 24, verse 7, God said, I will give them a heart to do it, to know me. Meaning I'll give them the heart of knowledge. God wants you to know him. You are a child of God. Do you know God? What kind of information do you know about God? <coughs> if there are, there is a religion, okay, although Christianity, I don't believe is a religion, I believe it's a lifestyle. 
But if there is a religion where people know little about that very religion, it is Christianity. If you go to the Muslim, they oblige them to know about the Quran, about their prophet, about all the things. They oblige them to know that. They'll learn that. They'll beat them for them to know. If you go to the Jewish, it's the same thing. In the Judaism, they are teaching their children to know about Yahweh. But in Christianity, we don't know about our God. We don't have knowledge. Why? Because we don't study. So knowledge comes through two ways. The first way, it is by studying. If you study, you will retrieve knowledge. People, they want to become big. Christians, they think that if they spend time by saying chabara, bara, bara, chabara, they'll make it at school. You're not going to make it at school if you don't take your book note and study. Beloved, those people who are excelling, those people who are getting 80% of marks, those people, they're having two eyes, just like you and me. One brain, just like you and me, and They've been given 24 hours a day just you and me. How come that they do better than you? How? The difference is because they are studying. Many of us, we have been given the Bibles just like everybody else. But others are retrieving treasures from these Bibles. Whereas you are already in sorrow. The problem is you don't study the Bible. You don't study the Bible. That's why God said to Joshua, if you want to succeed, meditate, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, meditate in this day, in this word, day and night. Christian, we don't study the Bible. We don't study God. God promised us that he will give us the knowledge of him. But that knowledge will come through studying his word. Through studying what he has given us. We go by a very expensive shoes, very, very expensive clothes, yet we are unable to buy a Bible. When it comes to buying a Bible, we always want to be given as a gift from church because we don't understand the value of that. If, no, I'm not going to ask you. If I just do a test and say, lift up your Bible, you will be surprised the kind of Bible people will be lifting up. And they will even be among us. People have the guard to lift up their phone, calling it the Bible. You are not serious. Hallelujah. Amen. How will you study the Bible? The people are studying the Bible in their iPad. But you will see when you are studying your Bible in the iPad, when you open, there is a message that comes that distracts you. You go two minutes on that message and finish and go back to the Bible. And then three minutes to something and go back to the Bible. Beloved, be serious with your knowledge. Because knowledge it is power. Amen. Knowledge it is the key. Amen. People are manipulating us because we do not have knowledge. Amen. Now coronavirus is coming back in the name of Jesus. It shall not be confined where it's coming from. People are, how many people are dying by fear? Many people die just because of fear. Because it does not have the knowledge. Imagine if we knew about coronavirus when he arrived, as we have the knowledge now. Many people could have handled that because we have knowledge. But that time, if somebody had corona, everybody would run away. Why? Because we do not have knowledge. You see, knowledge it is important. But knowledge, you need to find it. Knowledge is hidden. Knowledge, you don't just, you don't just sit and knowledge comes. You don't just sit in your house and, and knowledge comes. You cannot just pray, God, give me knowledge. God say, yes, I'm giving you the heart to know me, but don't study the Bible. If you want to know me, study the Bible. If you want to know God, study the Bible. If you want to know about something, study that thing. If you want to know how to cook, it is not just to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm a good cook now. Hallelujah. Let me go to the kitchen. I'm telling you, you'll kill us. Pray my Lord, I want to know how to cook in the name of Jesus. And go to a woman. Say, teach me how to cook. Then God will use that person to teach you. You see the difference? Lazy have become Christian. They don't study. I'm not only speaking about study. I mean the things of God. I'm speaking about life in general. 
If you want to know about something, study it. If you want to have, want to be something or you want to do something, study that thing. Learn about it. Master it. Many Christians we don't master what they are doing. That's why they manipulate us. That's why they are pagan and manipulating us. Beloved, what do you think that pagan are? You will give me the argument. No, you know pagan. They are going in the lodge. They are getting the lodge. If Bona they are going in the lodge, in satanic lodge. And they've got more knowledge. You, you should inquire more. Because you are going to the, the lodge of the lodge. You are going to the master of the universe. You are going to the God who created those people there. So if you go to God, you should have more knowledge than them. People are always saying that, you know, when you were at the university, people are telling us, no, you know, you need to go and, and, and you know, go to those lodge for us to have knowledge. So no, we have God who has more knowledge than those people. These people, they are only discovering. They are not creating anything. They are discovering what God made already. Me, I'm going to the God who made them. He can not only make me discover, he will explain to me also why he made it. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that you may also have Isaac Newton in the church. Those can also find things. When the same people are discovering things, they are only pagan. Listen, you have the spirit that is above the spirit that was in the pagan. So you can discover more than them. If you inquire knowledge. The first of your class shall not be a pagan. A Muslim who doesn't even know God. It shall be you a child of God. Because you have God with you. Hallelujah. And in fact, the Bible says, God says, you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You shall be up and not down. You shall be the first and not what wrong with you? You are always the last. Why? Because you don't know him. you don't have knowledge. From today in prior knowledge, brothers and sisters, the good thing of today, knowledge is everywhere. All it takes from you is to study. You can Google and you have knowledge. There are books everywhere. You know, we never had knowledge available now, you know, as it was before. Before, for you to have knowledge, you have to pay. Now, I'm telling you, knowledge is everywhere. You can get knowledge. Be like the Christian of Berea in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts 17, verse 11. Please give us that scripture. I want us to read it. I'm not only speaking about knowledge of things of God, but I'm speaking about knowledge in general. But here, I'm emphasizing about knowing God. Because the knowledge of God is the key. You need to know your God. The Bible says, the people who know their God, they shall suffer. Those who know their God, they shall suffer. If you do not know your God, you might not suffer. So you need to know your God for you to suffer. The Bible says, now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. For they received the message with great eagerness and, and, and examined, in other words, they say, and studied, studied the scriptures when? Every single day. Why? To see if what Paul said was true. Do you study the Bible? Do you study the word of God? Do you study after we have preached here? Do you go home and study? Christians today, we are so lazy. We stand in front of TV. Remember, TV is controlled by the devil, brothers. And you are not even using proper channels. You know, I go to the Christian houses and I look at the channels that they are watching, I'm crying. You know, when I give my life to Jesus, in my TV, we only have two channels. Two channels. And all those channels were the national channels and the other channels were the channels of the country, the, the, the neighborhood country. So we only two channels. And those channels were not from God. We were crying to have a channel that will, will, will tell us about God. Now you and me, we have many channels that talks about God. But don't watch those channels. You, when they just give you the, you got directly news. Al Jazeera. It's not bad. It will give you information. It will give you knowledge. But not knowledge that will build your life. Not knowledge that's going to build your faith. Hallelujah. I will be people of God. 
So you have now many channels. Why don't you want your channels? Those channels that can give you more knowledge about your God. Hallelujah. The Bible said the creation of Berea, they were starting the Bible. They wanted to know more about their God. They wanted to know more, inquire more about their God. Now be careful about knowledge. Because it is not all the knowledge that you need to get. Because there are things when you know them, you trouble your life. There are knowledge which are forbidden knowledge. That's why you must be selective about what you want to know. You can't just open any, any window that is on your phone. There are windows when you open them, you get hooked. How many children were, were, were hooked by pornography? The poor child was, uh, he wanted to go there to Google something that has to do with school. But because a window was there, there was a window there. And, and the poor child wanted to know more about. Somebody told him, do you know about? There are people who went into mysticism. Why? Because he followed the link. Do you want to know more? And you know those things when you go to one, it will call you to two. It will call you to three. And before you do, you realize you're already deep in the knowledge of that. And our brain has this sickness. When it sees things, it keeps them in your mind. And when you are Lord, it will be bringing it back to you. Giving you some suggestion. Don't you want to do what you saw? Don't you want to do what you heard? Don't you want to do what you read? Has it ever happened to you? You read something and then you are Now the desire of trying it is coming. Let me try what I read. Beloved, you don't need to have all the knowledge. Be careful. Be selective in the knowledge that you are inquiring. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible says in the middle of the garden there was a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God told them, I don't, want to, I don't want you to get that knowledge. It's a wrong knowledge. The wise also in that very same garden, the tree of life. It was there. And God never said anything about the tree of life. I don't know if there's any brothers and sisters. There was two trees there. I don't know if you are reading very well your Bible. There was the tree of life. God said nothing about it. Actually, God said you can eat from every fruit of the garden except so it means that they have the ability also to eat from the fruit of life. And the ones, the three, God said, that one I don't want you to eat because it shall give you a bad knowledge. The Bible says the ones, a tree, that was an evil tree. Hallelujah. Now in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, something happened there. Something terrible happened and it's happening to many people here. In, on earth. The Bible says Eve had a conversation with the devil with Satan the liar and Satan said is God saying you should not eat you should not eat this tree no 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 actually Satan because he's a liar he said is God saying that you should not eat any other tree of the garden he said no God said we can eat any other tree of the garden except that tree where you are standing. Yeah. You know, the devil always will stand next to forbidden things and will make them shine. Yeah. That's why be careful on the second look. Because the second look is always magnified by the devil. Let me say that again. Be always careful about the second look. Because the second look is always magnified. So what the devil does, when you do the second look, he magnifies what you're looking at. That's your papa when you're driving and you see a beautiful creature in front of you. Because you did not plan to see and you have seen, now don't plan to see. Because the moment you plan to see, this is the moment the devil magnifies it. Remember the devil is following you everywhere. Remember the devil has been around a human being for many years. He knows plus minus what you can think about when you are in front of this kind of situation. Are with me? When you look at a young man with a, you know, six pack, maybe he's been having eight, and he's looking very good. 
When you look and you have seen, don't go for the second time. Let me, because when you go to the second time, it's going to be looking with details. And looking with details will hook you. Because the devil will ask you, did God say you should not? That's what he said. And now he said to him, he said, for God, he said, no, God is lying to you. He said, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This is exactly what God didn't want them to know. So there are certain knowledge that you don't need to know them. You don't need to know about pornography, brothers and sisters. For you to have a good marriage, you don't need to go to pornography first. No, but somebody told me, Pastor, you know, how can I go if I don't try? God never said we should try. There are, there are certain things you don't try them. You start them. Yeah. Because if you try here, you try here, you try here, when you go there, all the trial will be in your head. <coughs> the trial one, and the trial two, and the trial three, and you start comparing. Many marriages went into trouble because comparison has happened. Many lives have been destroyed because you get into the knowledge of forbidden things. Be careful and watch things where you are reading or where you want to know more about. You know, sometimes I'm telling people, why when you open Google, you always go to those kind of dirty things? Why can't you open Google and go to the preaching? Why can't you open Google and go to something that can give you good knowledge? God said, you should not go to that knowledge. They are forbidden knowledge. Can you please nicely with joy tell your neighbor, they are forbidden knowledge. Yeah. Tell him again, they are forbidden knowledge. Yeah. Don't open them. Don't. Because the moment if open this forbidden knowledge, you know what happened? Look at what was, how we are suffering. All because of this woman who gets that forbidden knowledge. There are things that you are suffering because you went into forbidden knowledge. There are trouble that you put yourself because you knew things that you were not supposed to know. Now they are troubling you. You can't sleep at night. Sometimes I see my children not sleeping at night. Papa, he's afraid. You see? Because you went into forbidden knowledge. You knew that the devil came. Why do you want to know about the devil? Know about Jesus Christ. Know yes. about Jesus. I don't care about the devil. I want to know about Jesus. If I know about Jesus, I'm safe. Yeah. I know that he's my helper. I know he's my strong tower. I know he's my protector. I'm safe. I don't need to know about the devil. Yeah. We, many people here, you are afraid because you know more about Satan than you know about God. Who told you that every cockroach you see in your house, it must be come from the devil? It's because you know more. Who told you that every time there is a cat who is uh, crying outside, they must be? It is because it gives you those knowledge. If you didn't know, you will sleep calmly if in the cat is near, you will sleep. Because nobody told you that when the cat is doing that, it's a demon. You sleep at peace. Remember the devil, what he does, he brings fear. And what he does, he will give you wrong knowledge. And in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18, Solomon is saying that well, the one who knows many things, he will have many sorrow. If you know a lot of things, you will have many sorrow, my brother. There are things you don't need to know them. Beloved, there are, there, are, there are books, you better not open them. There are knowledge, you better not acquire them. Because they are dangerous. The Bible says, for, for with much wisdom, remember here he's speaking about human's wisdom. He's not speaking about the wisdom of God. He said, for with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. Be careful. Know what you're supposed to know. Don't go and look for things you don't have to know. I'm going to read this book. Exotic Transportation in the night of the seventh day. Why you always go on to the very complicated things? Even you went to you, I don't, I don't mind you to go to watch a movie, but you always go watch very difficult and terrible movie. The return of the second man in the dead woman. Now, what, 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 what do you want? And you go there, you want to watch those things. Beloved, they are going to complicate your mind, give you the knowledge that's going to trouble your life. Many people have been troubled because he read things. 
Many people here, they become afraid because read things. Read the Bible. Amen. Go into the Bible, it will give you proper knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So be, be, be careful with them. Forbidden knowledge. Now, knowledge is good, but it's not enough. After receiving the knowledge, you need to get the second thing, which is understanding of the knowledge that you got. Because there are people who've got knowledge, but without understanding. He has accumulated a lot of information. He knows a lot of things, but he has wrong understanding of those things. You know, there is a saying, that says, um, let me read it. This says, say, how can I say it? I know it better in, uh, in French, but anyway. The say, say, let me just summarize it. The, this, this say in the French is talking about the, the one who have or science without conscience is a ruin of the soul. Science without conscience is a ruin of a soul. But in other way, if you have knowledge without understanding, it will bring you into destruction. It's like a child that you give a knife. A knife can be a good thing because it can help him to cut or to do whatever. But if that child does not have a knowledge, he can even kill his neighbor. Because he does not have a knowledge. So, I mean understanding. So it is important for you to have understanding. What is understanding? Understanding is to perceive the intended meaning of things. Is to perceive or to catch the intended meanings of things or of words. You know, when I speak to you, and I say to you, hee ho. <laughs> you know what I said? Hee ho. <laughs> if you knew Chinese, you'll understand it means good day. But you did not perceive because you do not have understanding of my language. <clears throat> Are you getting me? I've said something, but you cannot execute because you have knowledge that there is Chinese. But you do not have understanding that what I've said now, it is Chinese. Am I making sense to somebody? So it is important for you to only not have knowledge, but you must understand what you know. And you must understand how to apply what you know. And understanding and applying properly what you know brings somebody into wisdom. So wisdom means knowing things and understanding them for the good application of what I know. That is wisdom. Wisdom is all about how to apply in life what you know. That's what creates wisdom. So it is important for your wisdom. Wisdom in quite to have knowledge and in quite to have understanding of what you know so that you may apply them appropriately. There are people who have knowledge but they apply that knowledge wrongly because of lack of understanding. He knows how to treat people but his treatment is only to take away pregnancy. You have knowledge, but how are you using that knowledge? Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 8, verse 30, Acts chapter 8, verse 30, the Bible says, there was a man from Egypt who was going back to Egypt. He was reading the book of Isaiah. He had knowledge about Isaiah 53. He was reading. He had the knowledge of that. He was reading, he was reading, he was reading. And then Philip the evangelist came close to him. He asked him a question. Do you understand what you're reading? He said what? Do you understand what you're reading? So now the problem is, this man was accumulating knowledge without understanding that 
knowledge. And they understand when he took that knowledge and understood the knowledge, he brought him to salvation. The Bible says, Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the men reading Isaiah the prophet and asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And if you read down, they say, how will I understand if they don't teach me? So, you need understand. And in Job chapter 42, verse 3, Job chapter 42, verse 3, Job's friend said, I spoke things that I did not understand. There are people who are speaking, who are preaching. You know, it is dangerous. There are people even here coming to the share and preach things you don't understand. If you don't understand things, even if you know them, but if you don't understand them, don't speak about it. I know about that, but I don't understand about that. Don't speak about that. I know about deliverance, because I've read about deliverance, and deliverance exists. I know. But if you don't understand, don't talk about it. Because it's going to put you into trouble. The six uh, sons of Shepherd, they entered the play, they know that there is deliverance. They had that knowledge. And they wanted to apply that knowledge without understanding. What happened to them? They were bitter. There are people here who are in trouble because you are trying to apply a knowledge that you don't understand. Hallelujah. You need knowledge. And David, in Psalm 119, verse 125, Psalm 119, verse 125. David cried to God. He said, give me understanding. David knew a lot of things about God. He knew a lot of things about life. He knew a lot of things about things which are happening around. But what was lacking in him, it was understanding. He said, I am your servant. Give me what? Understanding that I may know your testimony or your word in that, in that person. You see, if you do not have understanding of the word of God, you will die. You will have them with you, but you don't understand that I have the riches with me because I do not have understanding. And for you to have understanding, you need to inquire understanding from God. You need to pray, ask God, God, give me understanding of things. You see, understanding comes when you ask God to open your mind. You know, God have this light that is shined into your mind. is shined into your intelligence so that you can now understand what you know. You know you have all the knowledge, all the information. Now it will help you to understand how to apply those knowledge in your own life so that you can now have wisdom or you can become a man of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So first thing for you to have understanding, ask it from God. Amen. But there's a second thing. Come with me. In the book of Psalm 119, verse 104. 104. You see, beloved, God gives us everything, all the secret. It is just in his way. All we need to do is to apply it. For you to have understanding, the first thing you must Ask it to God. God, give me understanding. If you don't ask understanding, you're not going to get it. God will give you understanding. He will shine in your life. He will teach you things. He will give you ability to understand them. Now, here he said, I gain what? Understanding. How? How? Tell me. How? I gain understanding from your presence. In other versions, he said, I get understanding by studying your word. Study. So you see, when you are studying the word of God, because the word of God, it is alive. The word of God is what? Alive. So what the word of God does, when you are studying it, it will first give you knowledge, you will know it. And then, because the word of God is a person, is a, is a, is a, is a living person, it's Jesus. When you are reading it, it will also give you understanding. So the word of God, it's, it's, it's alive. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible said, the word of God is active and alive. It is alive and active, brothers and sisters. If you want to have understanding of things or understanding of the word of God, go back to the word of God. It will give you knowledge, but it will give you also understanding. That's why when you start 
meditating the word of God, you must pray. Say, God, I am about to read your word. Let us have a conversation. Let you speak to me. So when you open the word of God, when you'll be getting knowledge, God will be taking that knowledge and will be transforming it into understanding directly. Amen. And this it is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you must make sure that you and the Holy Spirit you do not have, you do not have problems. You see, when you are grieving the Spirit of God, when you and the Spirit of God you are not in good terms, you can't understand the word of God. You can't understand things of the world. Of the world. So it is important for you to make sure that you and the Spirit of God you are in good terms. You are not fighting. You remember what makes the Spirit of God to become sin in your life is one thing: sin and disobedience. Sin and disobedience makes the Spirit of God. To not speak to you anymore. Anyway, it's not that the Spirit of God does not speak. No, because the Spirit of, of God speaks all the time. What is happening is when you sin, your ears become dull to the voice of God. But God will always speak. Because when you sin, you become far away from God. When you are far away, if I'm here and I'm speaking to you, the more you go away from me, the more the perception of my voice will become difficult, will be fading away. And the more far you are, you can, you can hear that I'm talking, but you might not discern what I am saying. Unfortunately, in the church, people are hearing that God is talking, but they don't discern what God is telling them. Like now, God is talking. How many people are discerning what he's telling you? When you feel this church here, when they ask you, why did the pastor say, ah, that it was powerful, you know, it was powerful. Why did the pastor say, you will only remember the job that I did? But the most important thing is what I spoke about. Few people don't remember that. Why? Because you are far away from God. Oh, the Spirit of God, He is not at ease in you. You see, when the Spirit of God is at ease in you, you'll be impregnating every word into your heart. There is one scripture, the last one, that I like. And I always pray for God to help me. Every time I'm meditating the Word of God in Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Look this beautiful scripture. Jesus is having the ability to give you understanding of every matter of life. Every matter of life. The Bible says, Then Yeshua said to them, Verse 45, 45, 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. 45. The Bible says, or maybe start by 40, 44. Let's understand first what happened. For all of us to get it well. The Bible said, Then he said, When I was with you before I told you that, before I told you that everything written about me by Moses and the prophet and in the psalm must all come. Verse 45. Now he said to them this. Beautiful. He said, Then he did what? He opened what? Their mind. So Jesus had the key that opened your mind for understanding. Amen. The Bible said he did what? He opened their mind for what? For them to understand. Let me read it. To understand what? These many scripture. Scriptures of life. If you want to understand things of life, let the Lord, the master of life, explain them to you. You can go to school. You know, beloved, God is my witness. When I was in high school, I was battling with mathematics. And then I became a Christian. Mathematics and physics was difficult. And what I was doing, I had mathematics, I had physics, I had chemistry. Because I needed to go to, to medical school. I needed to have those three things. You know, I asked God to give me understanding of those things. You know what happened to me? In the night, I was seeing somebody explaining to me chemistry and mathematics. You explain to me in the night. When I wake up in the morning, I understand things. Hallelujah. Amen. There was one time, I was already a Christian, I was in the uh, metric. <laughs> God is good. I was already a fervent Christian. Already three years back. So, I missed a test. And I had to write that test alone.
alone. All alone. God is not. You know, people tell you, you're going to write alone. Chemistry, alone. You, you're not going to pass. Because if you are many, we can try to. I wrote that test alone. I asked God, help me to understand. You know what happened to me? From the first question to the last question, I get them all right. I got 20 out of 20. Even the lecturer himself was confused. How come? You see, when God is in your side, he can explain to you the things of life. Remember, chemistry, it is not out of God. All the formulation of chemistry existed already. People are only discovering them. God is the one who made those secrets. So God knows about them. God knows about mathematics. He knows about physics. He knows about all those laws of physics. He knows about that. God knows medicine. He knows anatomy. He knows physiology. He knows everything. People think that, oh, this is mathematics. God doesn't know. He knows that he's the one who made them. Those people who discover the theorem of Pythagore is only coming from God. Pythagore did not invent everything. He just found out things which existed already. You see, at your workplace, when they're tormenting you with this kind of whatever that God knows about that. He knows about those theories. He can teach you about them. God knows about those things. He can teach you about them because he is God. Hallelujah. There is nothing that people make. All they are doing is discovery. Beloved, the Bible says, then he opened their mind to understand. Can somebody say, God opened my mind to understand? Tell him again, God opened my mind to understand. You must understand the secret of trading. You know, people are trading, they go to school and learn, but you, you're going to have already one path ahead because of God. Who knows better than that? Hallelujah. He knows better about economy, he knows better about engineering, he knows better about whatever. He knows better. So he can open your mind in everything you can pray. Beloved, now let me conclude. Understanding will help you to apply diligently and correctly the knowledge that you have accumulated either by studying or by experiencing. Then you will reach wisdom. Then you will become a wise man. When people look at you and say, it's a wise man. A wise man, he's wise just because he knows how to go around about things. You know, when you look at this one, it's difficult. When you come to the wise men, because of the knowledge that he has, and they understand that he has, he put them together, he will tell you how to go about things. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you want to become wise this morning? Then rise up on your feet so that you can pray the name of Jesus. <laughs> Beloved, it is possible to have understanding of things. <laughs> It is possible to have knowledge. And we saw how important it is for us to have knowledge, but also to have understanding of what we know. All right. Somebody ask God to give you understanding. Tell him, Lord, I want to know things. And help me to only know what is important to me. Block me to not know things that are going to destroy me. Tell him, Lord, give me knowledge to things that are going to promote me, to things that are going to lift me up, to things that are going to build my faith, that are going to build my life, build my business, build my family, build my life. I don't want to learn things that are going to destroy me. Speak to God. Speak to God. Tell him to help you to have knowledge. Father, I pray for knowledge. There are many things, Almighty oh God, in the world, but I don't want to know all of them, Lord Jesus. I just want to know things, oh mighty God, that can promote my, my life, that can promote my faith, that can help me, my God, to know you. Lord, I pray this morning, help me, oh Father, to have knowledge. Help me, mighty God, to read about you, Father God. Help me to inquire knowledge. Increase my knowledge, but increase my knowledge in things that I need to to know, not in everything, Father, because they are forbidden knowledge. Oh, Yahweh, block me to forbidden knowledge, but open me to your knowledge, 
Father. Open me to your knowledge. Block me to forbidden knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Now ask God to give you understanding. We saw that David asked God to give him understanding. Tell him, Lord, give me understanding of things that I know so that I may do the good application, the diligent application of things that I know so that I may become a wise man, a wise woman. Speak to God, Father. Now give me, mighty God, understanding. Oh, the Bible says, you open the mind of your disciples so that they may have understanding. Lord, I pray, open my mind to understand. Open my mind to understand what I see, to understand the experience that I've been through, to understand the knowledge of oh my God that I've accumulated by me being in this world. Lord, help me, help me to understand. Give me understanding. Give me understanding, Lord. Give me understanding, Jesus. Give me understanding. I feel that I should give you time to speak to God. Tell him now, tell him, Lord, look at my situation. I don't know how to go about it. I have a bit of knowledge, but this morning I want you to give me understanding so that I may know how to manipulate, how to maneuver around this situation, how to maneuver about this problem, around this issue, around this problem. Ask God, Lord, I have understanding that you've given me. Now I'm asking for wisdom so that you may help me. I'm asking my God for understanding, for me to know how to maneuver in this situation, how to maneuver in this problem. Father, come and help my brother. Come and help my sister. Yes, Lord, give her understanding. Give him understanding to know how to maneuver, to know how to go around, to go about this problem, to go about this situation, to go about whatever is happening. Lord, I pray so that you may help us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now you're going to pray. Every darkness, remember, the word darkness and the word ignorance are the same, having the same root in Hebrews. Darkness and ignorance are the same. So you're going to take away every darkness, every ignorance. I'm going to refuse it in your life in the name of Jesus. Whatever hinders you to inquire knowledge or to know more, you are going to take it out of your life in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. I cast darkness of my life that prevent me to increase my knowledge of you, the knowledge of good things. I cast darkness of my life. I cast darkness of the life of my sister and my brother. I command darkness to go. I command ignorance to go. What blocks us do not know you? What prevents us do not know you? I command it to go in the name of Jesus. I command darkness to go. Darkness, back your things and go away. Darkness, back your things and go. Darkness, back your things and go. Darkness, back your things and go. Ignorance, back your things and go. Ignorance, back your things and go. In the name of Jesus. Let your light shine, O Lamb of God. Let your light come now in our life. Light and knowledge are the same roots. Let your light shine upon our lives. Let your light shine upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. Shine, Lord. Shine, Lord. Now let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, need I need knowledge. I inquire knowledge. I pray, O oh God, I pray, oh God open, me open me to the knowledge, the knowledge that is necessary to my growth. Close me to forbidden knowledge in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, shine upon my life. Shine upon the knowledge that I have so that I may understand and do good application of everything that I know so that I may succeed 
and be wise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare I am wise. I am wise. I am wise. I am wise. In Jesus' name. Declare that you are wise now in the name of Jesus.